Hi, I'm Mark Goodfellow. I'm the lead elder of Church on the Way. I want to introduce us as a church to you, who we are. I want to tell you that we love the Lord Jesus Christ and we want to make him known throughout the earth. We want to work with God the Holy Spirit as he leads us and guides us in endeavoring to do this. We want to just tell you that we're a family that works together. We're united as one. We are on a journey to fulfill the purposes of God in our life. And we encourage you as we have this pioneering heart to, to go to the nations and to preach this gospel, not only in our, our nation of South Africa, but the nations of the earth, to reach out with the good news that we find in Jesus Christ. So in this process, we really do believe that we are a church on the go. We are on this journey, this adventure together. We don't have all the answers, but we do know who has the answer, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. So come and join us as we work together and we work on this journey to fulfill his plans and purposes for our lives. God bless you. Morning, everybody. So don't mind me holding my arm like this. It's just a bit in one place. So I normally wave my arms. So I won't be able to wave them today. <laughs> so uh, I trust that everybody had a... Let's just adjust this. That I trust that everybody had a good season off. And the title of the message this morning is New Year, New Plans. You know, as we all get to a new year, we all tend to run and make plans and, you know, see what's going to happen in the future and how we're going to do things. Sorry, I can hear the... That's better. Yeah, so we, we, we run around with all these plans. You know, so I went into the December time off and I had so many plans for that week. So I thought I was going to get all these things done with all these plans I had. And all that ended up happening was I came out of that week more tired than when I went into that week. So then you ask yourself, was that plan worth it? Was it worth it to try and do all those things in that little bit of time? And often we make plans and often we go ahead and do things and often we tire ourselves out because we tend not to take those plans and, you know, sit before the Lord and ask the Lord for wisdom, for guidance. We tend to just run ahead. And when I'm busy doing something, I want to get it done now. I don't like leaving it for tomorrow. So if I'm busy making something or if I'm busy with a project or whatever it might be, you know, if I know I've got to be finished today, I want it finished today, regardless of what happens in between. And if I know that, okay, it'll take me two or three days, on that day it must be done. I, that's, that's how I plan it going forward. But in that, I've noticed that in actual fact, when I take a step back and I do a little bit and I take a step back and, you know, carry on with that and I do a little bit, I tend not to struggle with the stuff. I tend not to hit walls. I tend not to have problems. I tend not to make mistakes. Because I tend to ask, Lord, what do I do in this situation before I even get back to doing it? Lord, show me an easier way. Lord, how do I make this fit without actually going down that road? Instead of trying to force it all in, in, say, a half an hour period, you do it over a while, but you ask the Lord for wisdom. And then you don't get frustrated and you don't want to headbutt what you're busy with or jump on it or break it or whatever the case might be because we tend to get frustrated. And sometimes life is like that. 
we get frustrated with our circumstances and we get frustrated with what's going on because we've made all these plans and it's not going according to plan. But whose plan is it not going according to? That's the question we need to be asking ourselves. But before I carry on, I actually uh, wanted to do this before I started. Um, so Jaden is 15 today, and he's hiding in the back there thinking that I forgot. And every time I look at him, I see he goes behind everybody. So I just wanted to say happy birthday to Jaden. And we know that the Lord will bless you abundantly as you seek and follow him. Amen. So how many of you guys have got plans for the new year? What's your plan, Uncle Dave? Who else had their hand up? Now everybody's hiding away like... Anybody else want to put up their hand? So you guys all answered in the correct aspect. So generally, we look at the new year and we go, Yo. And then you put your pants on and you go, yes, this is not fitting properly. I need to go to gym. I need to lose some weight. And we've all got these plans and we've all got these ideas and nothing wrong in it. There's honestly nothing wrong in it. But who's first? And where are our plans lining up? Are they lining up with the world? Or are they lining up with God's plan for your life? I had a plan yesterday. I did have a plan yesterday. <laughs> Said to my kids, come, I'll show you how it's done. You guys think you know what you're doing. Come, let dad show you. First one, I was okay. And I thought, yeah, hey, I got this. <laughs> so before I got to the big one, I thought, let me do the small one a few times, you know. The second jump off the small one and I planted my shoulder so hard into that floor. I was going, oh, where's my collarbone? <laughs> I had a plan. But my ego got the better of me. And wisdom went out the door. <laughs> and you know, we laugh, but that's what happens. That's what happens to us. We make these plans. And then all of a sudden, God gives us correction. And we go, mm -mm, no, 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 no. I'm going to show you. This is how you do it. And we might not do it that way, but we still have that same ego and that same attitude towards him. And we end up bumping our toes, kicking our knees, screaming and shouting, going down the wrong way. Why? Because we are not listening to him. I've gone so far off now. <laughs> so the verse today that I wanted to start with was Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. I like this verse. I like using this verse. You know, it's a favorite verse for me. But do you like using this verse when everything around you is falling apart? When it seems like no plan or no hope for the future? Do you know the backstory of this verse?
I want to encourage you guys. I'm not going to go through the whole backstory of this verse, but I want to encourage you guys to go to Jeremiah 28, 27, 29, read it through, get the backstory, understand what it is. Because we know that Israel was in captivity by the Babylonian people. Now, what would your plan have been in that situation? Be honest. Mine would have been, oh, let me try and escape. Or let me sabotage these people. Hmm. They think they've got me. I'll show them. That's how we are. We have so many ideas and plans and... But we don't stop to ask the Lord, yes, I'm in this situation, but what is your plan for my life where I am right now? So, what did God tell them? Jeremiah 29, 5 to 6. Build houses and live in them. Hey, that would have been the furthest thing away from my radar. Now you're stuck in captivity and God's telling you to build a house and live in it. That means they're going to be there for a while. I don't want to be here for a while. That would be my response to it. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage. Did you catch that part? It's explaining to you how long it's going to be. Take wives and have sons and daughters. And when those sons and daughters are old enough, take wives and sons for them or husbands and wives for them. Does that give you an idea of how long it's going to be? I would have been, no, 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 no. Let me show you how to jump over this wall. That would have been my response. Yeah. I need to get back on the bicycle and try it again. <laughs> so, look at what God is telling them in the situation that they find themselves in. And we have all these plans and we have all these ideas and things we want to do and our circumstances are like, mm -mm. and God's like, no, no, fit in with that, do this. We just want to make a U-turn and go the other way. And God is telling them, you will be here for a while, get comfortable. How long was a while? A very long while. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was 70 years. A very long while. That's a lifetime. And you think you're going to come out in a year's time? My plan worked. God's plan's better for us. Regardless. Regardless of what situation we find ourselves in. Generators running crime on the rise, regardless, God's plan is better. Not only did God tell them to get comfortable, this is the hard one, but also to help the people that were oppressing them. Yeah, us South Africans are like, no, 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 no. There's one for you. Mm, there's another one for you. Because that's how we are. When we get smacked one side, we're taught to smack the other side. Because we're more stuff. We don't want to be brought down. Ego again. Jeremiah 29, verse 7. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find welfare.
in this country, in its welfare, we will find our welfare. Are we breaking it down or are we building it up? Are we praying for our nation or are we speaking negative of our nation? Are we lifting our nation up in our words or are we breaking it down in our words? Because what we break down and destroy, we find our welfare in that. So, I like building things, I like making things, draw out a couple of drawings, get things going, and when I'm in a hurry, I tend to skip a few steps, make a few mistakes. I'm sure a lot of us are like that. And then when I've realized I've made a mistake, all of a sudden I want to jump on the things and kick them and I've got to take all the stuff and pack it away. Otherwise I end up breaking something because I get so frustrated. My ego then like, you know. Once again, like I've said, I mean, how many of you guys gone through something, planned something, it can be something simple, and thought, no, you're just going to get it done. Instead of just, you know, taking that few minutes and asking the Lord, Lord, give me wisdom in what I'm doing today. Give me wisdom when I walk into work today. Show me, Lord, the problems that I might face, solutions, answers, whatever it might be, so that we don't get to a situation where we've got to pack it away and throw it away before we end up breaking it or doing something stupid, something that we wouldn't want to do or say, or whatever the case might be. But to actually lay it before Him. Even small things. Because when we are in tune to God, we can hear Him. It's like what uh, Fleur said this morning, sitting there in tune with the generators. You know it's a generator going because you know the sound. And when you're in tune with the Lord, when you're spending time in His Word, when you're spending time with Him, when you're spending time in prayer, you know what? That can span over a whole day that you can talk to Him, ask Him, Build on that relationship with Him. But do not forget to do that in every aspect, in everything that you do. Because if we are not in tune to God, what are we in tune to? We then become in tune to what the world is throwing at us, slapping us in the face with all the time. Because it's one or the other. It really is one or the other. How much better would your circumstances be, your situations be, when we stay in tune with God? When we take our egos and our attitudes and all those things and push them aside, and just spend time with Him, stay in tune with Him, that when we move forward in our lives, when we have issues in our lives, when we face certain mountains, that we know, put your foot here, don't put it there, step there, don't put it there, there's a hole there, you'll fall in it. That we can actually hear what the Lord is saying. Yes, I'm using this as an example, but a lot of us end up stepping off into a hole. Yeah. This year has started off busy. Started off with 
okay, you need to slow down now. You need to uh, turn to me rather than carrying on with those things. It's life, life is a bit uh, busy at the moment. And yet I carried on. And I carried on pushing to get all these things done. When, am I, when else am I going to get time? When else am I going to do these things? There's so many things happening. This weekend's this, that weekend's that, this weekend's this, that weekend's that, next weekend's this. And so it goes for the rest of the year. So when am I going to get the time to do it? And you know what? I should have taken the time to put it before the Lord first. Because maybe my ego wouldn't have got in the way yesterday if I was more in tune with the Lord. I like jumping my bicycle and doing all these silly things with the kids. I do. I mean, I'm sure we've all got things that we enjoy doing. But do we put that first over our walk with the Lord? Or are we applying our walk with the Lord over everything else? Are we making the time to be with Him more than anything else? And most of us cannot say, I don't have the time. Stop watching TV. Then you've got time. Stop playing on social media. You've got time. There is no excuse to take the time and build that relationship with the Lord. And that is a new plan for a new year. Cut off everything that is not adding value, that is taking time away from you spending time with the Lord. TV, social media, whatever it might be. If you have to cut it off, cut it off. Our time is limited. For each and every one of us, every day is a blessing. We could wake up tomorrow and not wake up. And if you didn't wake up, would you be proud of the relationship that you built on earth here with your Lord Jesus Christ? Are you building His plans and His purposes? Are we in tune to His ways? Are we in tune to His plans? That His plans, His ways, His purposes become our plans, our ways, and our purposes. Because they are in line with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we are building a relationship with Him. Because we are in tune with Him. Those are the questions we need to ask ourselves. We need to sit before the Lord and ask Him, what do we cut off? What do I need to cut off, Lord? What is hindering me from drawing near to you? What is hindering me from fulfilling your plans? What is hindering me from your ways becoming my ways? I won't be much longer because I know it's getting hot. So Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your work to the Lord. And your plans will be established. Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Many are the plans that are in my mind. But whose plans prevail? Proverbs 16, verse 7. When a, way, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. And yet we tend to go, oh, hold on, I've got a plan. Let me just push my enemy over there and carry on with my plan over here. Because we are so focused on this could go wrong, that could go wrong. I need to make sure that this plan fits right down here instead of actually committing it to the Lord, working with the Lord through these things. If he says don't do it, don't do it. Carry on with the plans that he has for you. And generally what ends up happening is we go right down the middle without an issue. 
Because He is guiding us. Because He is showing us. We need to stop getting in the way of what the Lord has for us. Because then we get to the end of the year again and we go, oh, wow, where's me? Because we kept on getting in the way. I want to encourage you guys that in this year, make our Lord Jesus Christ plans your plans. Make his ways your ways. Spend time in his word. Spend time with him. Build relationship with him. Forget about reading all the other books and that. You need to sit with him. You need to take the living word of God and go through it. You need to read it. Spend time in it. Because the Holy Spirit gives you discernment in what you read. We stay in tune with what God is saying. Let's take the time and let's build relationship with him. Let's take the time and spend going over the word of God. If there's a TV program that's stopping it, then take that time, slot that time into your diary and open the word and switch the TV off. So let's plan to make God's plans our plans. Let's plan to make God's ways our ways. Let's be those lights. Let's shine bright for our Lord Jesus Christ so that those around us can see that we are in step and in tune with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we are in step and in tune with our Lord Jesus Christ, he also prompts us to speak to so-and-so, to go to so-and-so. Not just about our personal plans and personal lives. It's his plans. It's his ways. Because that's why we are here. So I, I want to encourage you to do that. Because I am quite sure that you do not want to go around the mountain over and over and over again. Because you've got a plan. So take those plans. Open the box, put them away for now, close the box. And let's focus on asking the Lord to direct our feet. Amen. So I want to ask those of you that want to take a step of boldness and stand today and say, Lord, your ways. Not mine, yours. Not my plans, your plans. Let's stand and let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come before you, Father. Lord, that we can build a relationship with you, Father God. And Lord, that each and every one of us, Father, are standing here today before you, Lord, so that, Lord, you can direct our footsteps, Father God. You can make our paths straight, Father. Lord, that in everything that we do, Father God, that it's to bring glory to your name, Father. It's to fulfill your plans, your purposes, Father. And Lord, it's your way, Father God. Father, we want to be so in tune to you, Lord, that nothing, Father, will be able to take our attention of what you have, Father, of what you are saying, Father God, of what you are directing us to do, Father God. Lord, I ask, Father, that for each and every one of us, Lord, that if something gets in the way of that, Father God, that you prompt us, Lord, to cut it off, that you prompt us, Lord, to push it aside, that, Lord, it'll be you and only you. It'll be your ways, it'll be your plans for our lives, Lord. We ask this today. In Jesus' name, amen.